without further ado, today we have Ayaz Hussein, and he is a, a marketing strategist, right? I think a, a content strategist from everything that I've seen. Um, he has he's very good at uh, just branding as, as well. I don't see a lot of people um, in this space that really seem to take their branding seriously and 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 really take hold of content strategy. But IS is one of those individuals. And I think because of that, right, I was hoping to get a lot of interesting um, perspective on some things that we don't get to touch on too often. So um, really quickly, just to give you run down the list, uh, IS has worked with Relentless Records, uh, Jamal Ed Edwards, Jessica Domingo, Nadia Rose, Star One, Joe Turner. I know you're working with, what, Amazon, I believe at the time. I, I appreciate you being on, man. Um, especially earlier than you thought it was. And um, it's, it's great to have you here today. So let's go ahead and get into the interview, man. First and foremost, man, how'd you hop into the music industry, really, if you don't mind running through that really quickly? Bro, first of all, I want to say thank you again, just because you are you're an OG in this space. And I've been looking at <laughs> you. You're a beacon of inspiration for this next generation anyway. So, bro, first of all, big up to you for even <laughs> inviting me on your platform, man. You are one of the realists around. That's funny, man. I appreciate it, man. You, that, that makes me sound old, but I, I, I appreciate it nonetheless. <laughs> no, of course, bro. So I got in the industry when I was about 18 years old, and nope. I knew I wanted to be a DJ from as young as I can remember. But actually getting into the marketing space was knocking on the door of record labels saying, can I intern for you? I was walking around with um, my CV, and I was just literally putting it in a brown envelope and it was a yellow CV. So that when you look at a stack of papers of all the white envelopes that were there and all the white paper that was on somebody's inbox, my letter would stand out. So I got in the industry just through pure determination that someone give me an opportunity. And then when I got the opportunity, I was the first one into the label and I was the last one out of the label because I wanted to prove my worth. Mm -hmm. And that's just always been my mentality that if anybody gives me the social media channels, they notice why is it on fire? Why is it like growing with no explanation other than there's a new kid with the controls? And, gotcha. you know, I'm, I'm 30 years old now. So like that 10 year journey has been very much like before I was waiting for them to give me an opportunity. And now I guess the tables have turned and I can give other people an opportunity. Let me advise your social media strategy. I can help it grow. Let me run your Facebook ads. I'm going to help you grow. And that oh. shift has been quite hard to do. But it, it took me about eight years to be able to say the power is in my hands now, not the power in the label's hands. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, I like that. Did you want to be, so you straight off the bat wanted to be on the business side, be in marketing more so than wanting to be an artist or any of that creative side. A lot of people want to do the creative yeah. side. That's true. You know, I think for myself, I get gassed. I'm a geek at heart. So when I see numbers growing, that's more of a feeling to me than seeing a crowd go nuts. As an artist myself, as a DJ, I enjoyed SoundCloud mixes because of this, the stats and the analytics behind it. Right? If people mess with the music, that's an amazing feeling. But yeah. I, I love the analytics side of it a bit more. Oh, that's a rare find, man. So you're in the right space. Okay. All right, well... Let's skip to. I want to go straight to, um, like your first, not even not not even your first client, like your current clientele, right? Um, and more on the artist side, where you're working on social media. Mm -hmm. What is what exactly does that look like from somebody like you? And how do you differ from marketers in general? Because people hear marketing, mm -hmm. but but there's so many facets of it. So where do you really sit in that? And, and what do you do for your clients? For real, I think it's honestly like a desire to serve. That's at the heart of it. I only work with artists that I can feel their hunger. It's probably the number one thing I'm looking for. Mm. If you aren't willing to match my energy level, I won't even work with the artist. Then I got to love the music sonically. I will never take a project anymore that really doesn't motivate me sonically. Because if I can't believe in the artist, how can I design a campaign for them? Mm. And then once we figure out, you know, if we're doing two months of coaching, maybe four months of coaching, all the way from maybe debut single up until debut EP. That's a traditional client that I'd work on. And 
we'd basically design a content calendar. What are you doing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? What tweets are going up? What TikToks are going up? Stories, real, you name it. Right. Everything is about announcing their EP, capturing the hearts of the people to get them to listen to the music. And then on the flip side, I've got the ads to drive traffic. If one can't already do their own traffic, I bring audiences, bring eyes and ears over to the content. And I'd say I'm different because I'm not motivated by money. I'm motivated by doing the right thing for good people. So a lot of marketers out there just want the paycheck and they'll, you know, we'll, we'll pitch you to a playlist. We'll pitch you to this press. We'll pitch you to here, here, here. That's a contact game. Yeah. I think what, what I'm doing is I'm educating an artist with skills they can take forever in their life and they can apply to their next release and their next release and their next release. And you, you said specifically that you typically work up until the debut, mm -hmm. right? Why is that? And why not after? I think for myself, like once an artist, when the wheels are turning, they can generate their own momentum. So they can then like, you know, capture that, that 20K to 30K fan base. They can start generating streams off their own back. I think they need help just to start the initial momentum. And yep. once, they're, once they're flying, I think they get in the good habits and they want to bring in different parts of the team. So they'll bring in, say, a booking agent. They'll bring in a PR. They'll bring in a playlist team. And they don't need organic social anymore. From my experience, I think they've learned the techniques of organic social by then. Got you. Got you. So you have specific skill sets that you like to offer a service. You probably have more skill sets than the one you actually service, right? That's that's the way I am, right? I could do a lot of things for you, but I only want to do what I want to do for yeah. you because the other ones aren't maybe fun for me or whatever, right? So you stay in that particular space. But on that point, my bro, so like a lot of artists, they'll, they'll come as a friend later. So we've worked together so long, but I'm all right, but I've got a quick question. Can I ask you? I'm like, always. Like, we have a quick question about ads. Can we ask you? I'm like, always. So yeah. I'm down to support even when it's about the artist winning and not about the revenue. I think that's a rare thing to have. Most people will trying to be increasing their billables. I'm trying to set artists up with success. So I don't know if you can see this little neon sign. Neon sign, says, it says AAH. And that stands for my full name, Ayaz Afab Hussain. Okay. And that's also all about helping. So that's yeah. the agency name. That's the podcast name. That's the mission is to help artists help themselves. So as long yeah. as I'm doing my purpose, then I'm on the right path, you know? But, but when we talk about the details, all right, leading up to a, a debut single, how long might that take? Lead up to a debut single, I'm a big believer, like most record labels will say, four to six weeks of a marketing campaign for even just the first single. Mm -hmm. But I think you need three weeks ahead of that. So it's the campaign before the campaign mm -hmm. where you really come out of ghost mode when you haven't been creating any content, you've been radio silent, you come out of ghost mode and you just show up for three weeks first. Mm -hmm. Then you typically start your four to six week marketing campaign from single one of a five track EP as an example. You need four to six weeks on single one, four to six weeks on single two, maybe even another third month for single three and drop the remaining songs on the EP date. So probably net timeline, you're looking at three and a half to four months. And a lot of people be impatient for that. You know, they're so excited for people to hear the music. They rush the process. And, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. Like, would you rather have 400 listeners or 14,000 listeners. And that really can be the difference is if you grind at it, it will take three times longer, but it will do more than 30 times better. And yep. that's the outcome I would want. I know you probably very much agree with maybe different timeline, my bro. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the timelines are like, they slightly vary in the situation, but generally speaking, I, I agree with almost those exact timelines to a T, but the overall idea 100%. Like the, the more energy you put into it leading up, 
Like, what, what do you expect, right? People want to do things for two weeks or three weeks. I think an issue that a lot of artists fo- uh, run into is legitimate focus. Mm-hmm. You talked about that impatience and not seeing the result they want to fast enough. Mm-hmm. So you aren't able to just stay on those actions without getting that candy of, of a big result. But it's really that bit, that buildup that's happening now that's going to give you the activity later, right? Well, I used to work in sales. Sure. It's like, if, if I take a break today, I might not feel it today, but a month from now, I'm going to have no calls this week. And I'm like, why, what's going on? Well, it's, it's what you did four weeks ago. And it's yes. that same concept, right? It's like you, you, you're, you're building activity and built, and, and that mo- that momentum is a very real thing. So yes, 100%. Um, I mean, bro, it's just about talking points to me. I think like most people have the talking point of announcing when the record is coming out. Yep. And announcing the record is out now. Yeah. And I'm just like, I call them the WHs. So what the song is about, mm. who helped you write the song, where mm. you wrote the song, when you wrote the song, why you wrote the song, how you wrote the song. Like all of these WHs are individual feed posts that you stagger across the two weeks, the three weeks, whatever it is, the WHs. And you make a post about each one. You're like, this is my, this was a situation I was in. Explain that in a feed post. This is uh, a trip I went on three years ago and we wrote the idea in that studio session that became this song. All those little stories that you would tell someone in person, it's about telling people in a digital landscape. I love it, man. Uh, like I said, I could tell just from the little I could find about you that it, that you one of the few people who actually think about more like me when it comes to the, some of these things, um, because I don't have maybe like two of those H's. How you, how you say it? W-H's, <laughs> I might not yeah. have two, but the overall idea is is narratives, right? I use the word narrative, use the word stories, but it's always how many narratives can you find that are a part of this process, and that allows you to keep getting people's attention. And people think people get uh, tired of seeing you. Right. Like, oh, it's spam. And it's like, no, you got lazy and you just kept showing the same thing. But if you showed me the same thing in a different way, you're talking about it. Right. I'm, like you said, who wrote the song? Right. Where did I write the song? What was the inspiration or the story? But like those are this, it's all the same thing. But I'm I'm consuming and entertained by each in the, uh, direction individually. And that allows you to get into people, people's face way more times <laughs> if you are you able nail on the head. to do that. Nail on the right? head, bro. Because people will say something like, I think I'm posting too much. Yep. And I'll be like, did, did anyone tell you you're posting too much? They're like, nah, no one said anything. And I usually reply is, well, that's your thinking, what you think people think not what they actually said. Yeah. So even if you tripled your output, you still wouldn't be posting enough to piss people off that much that they'd hate it. They're a fan of yours. They, they're just waiting for you to talk to them. And so when you finally do talk to them, they love it. They're not going to say, you're posting too much now. I want you to go away again. They're yeah. a fan. The more you give them, the more you feed them, the more they will mess with the music. Yeah. It's funny because that's even more true today than five years ago and it was true then right like five six years ago when i instagram was still chronological and you really could like get in front of people's face a lot that are on your timeline before it really got diluted even then people weren't posting uh too much or afraid but it was a lot i i felt the energy more i i I did did some experiments back then but i think like what you're alluding to is is a fact that i don't I don't know. It's, I guess it's just hard to be a, a content creator and not get that feedback. Right. Like you, mm. you're, you, it's like having a conversation, but you feel like you're being one sided. Yep. Right. And yeah. people are waiting for that real feedback. So you just feel like, man, I just said a whole and you didn't say anything back. Am I talking too much? It's probably a similar phenomenon. But, you know, what I think cripples people is like living in the past. So SoundCloud era, 2012, 13, 14, you'd post some content you would refresh 200 plays. You'd refresh 500 plays. You'd wake up the next morning, 10K. We're not living in 2013 no more. We're living in 2021. And the market is oversaturated. There's 500,000 times more creators right now. You're competing for attention. 
So if you're not giving enough attention grabbing content, don't complain that no one's messing around and paying attention. So I think what you said, instead of waiting for comments, you've got to put it out there. What do you guys think in a non corny, non hidden agenda type of way? Because if you ask with an agenda, people see right through it. But if you ask selflessly, they're going to give you that constructive feedback. Mm. Yeah, I think TikTok is a great uh, testament of that. Because you'll see the corny, right? They're really like, you're trying to trick me into thinking there's this this story going on. And then you'll see somebody just really ask, like, what do y'all think? And there's nothing fancy, nothing Mm -hmm. like really thought through. And people are uh, definitely willing to give feedback. So that's, that's, that's a great point. You're well, right. Authenticity wins, bro, for sure. I really want you guys to take in what I has just said, because the biggest, most consistent problem I see in artists, the most, right, but it's actually pretty consistent across the board and so many other people trying to use social media and just create products in general, is that they can't get out of their own head, their own opinions, and their own perspective, that it's almost no empathy and understanding about what's out there in the marketplace. And the truth of the matter is all that matters is the marketplace. Now, when you're creating your art for yourself, right? You're in your room, you're listening, that's all for you. But when we're talking about music business or trying to build a fan base, it has to be about those people. And that small concept alone, for a lot of, for those who don't know, I, I actually entered the music industry by building a music festival. And that came, it built very organically, uh, very fast off word of mouth because of the experience. And the advantage I had, right, was I wasn't an artist and I wasn't even trying to build a music festival. That's a whole nother story for another day. But because around town, right, these artists will have, oh, it's not the club, it's an art event. But when you go to the art event, it was about the artist. I'm really trying to get people to come and see me, right? But I didn't have anything to come and see. I was not the artist. I'm behind the scenes person. So it forced me to think about what are these people going to enjoy when they get here? How can I stimulate them as much as possible? So it made for a far deeper holistic experience for the end user because I didn't have anything to show them. I wasn't Bram and Sean at the time. I wasn't trying to consult anybody at the time. All I wanted was to have a really dope event. And it forced that. And I think even sometimes as we get more of these labels and brands, we start to forget some of those things as well. So you're never going to be like capturing the, the user's attention and their satisfaction. Um, so please hold on to what I said when we finally get the chance to post this. Go back. If anything, like rerun, like go, go, uh, go listen to that part. All right. And we'll definitely make a snippet of it as well. Um, Bro, I want to hear that story sometime with you and me over the festival. I need that story. You, just, you imagine, be- just imagine if, if you found an off white wearing breakfast club listening fan of Anderson Pack and the Baltimore Ravens. Mm-hmm. If you found all that goodness in one person, I want that person to be my best friend. Yep. Right, so that's the type of customer you want to serve. Yep, uh, and that's probably like maybe maybe where we leave it tonight. Maybe. Yeah. Hey, well, we'll leave it here. That guy that he just went through could be one of your friends. So maybe you have a friend who legitimately should be a, a fan of the, what you make, and if you can make it for them, right? Your goal is just to make them finally be like, "Yo, that's it." Then you might have something there, but some people got hater friends. So that might not apply. So <laughs> that, that that's it for today, guys. Um, again, make sure you follow IS. I dropped this information in the chat. Um, IS, I'll let you end it off the way you want to end it off. If there's anything that you want to say before, uh, before we go. You know what? If I can leave you with one last thing, I'd say mm-hmm. education without execution means nothing. So if you're on this call, you're fired up. You've got so many ideas popping. But if you don't read them notes and execute come, you know, middle of this week into next week, then you might be in the same situation top of next year. So education without implementation means nothing. So when you execute on what we've talked about here, you set yourself up for success into next year. Yes, sir. All right, man. No better note to leave it than that. Have a good one, Ayaz. We'll be good talking to you, bro. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart, man. It means the world. Hey, sure, man. Thank you for being on, dog. Appreciate Thank you, bro. Take it easy, man. It's the network.